What's up guys, Anders here with another Black Desert video. Today we're going to go over the Heidel Ball announcements. So lots to get through. Let's get right into it. First up, we have the official confirmation that Corsair will be releasing on June 29th. We were shown a lore trailer and a gameplay trailer for the class. She is a female human pirate, daughter of Patrigio, a pretty important NPC in the game. And she uses a cutlass as a main weapon and what seems to be a magical bow item as her secondary weapon. She has a sort of like water theme with the ability to cut enemies with waves of water and the ability to transform into a mermaid while using certain attacks, which is insane. The style of Corsair seems to be that of fluidity in her movement, very smooth, and the trailer shows plenty of that. Honestly, it's an amazing looking class. Frankly, the most hype I've been for a class in a long time. Ever since Wizard Awakening with the water effects, I've always wanted some Something close to like a water bender of sorts for a class so a pirate class with the ability to turn into a mermaid is pretty close and pretty incredible we can only dream of what her awakening will be with that whole water theme we may be looking at maybe a trident maybe something completely different who knows let me know what you guys think about the class in the comments now pre-creation is next week and the launch for all regions is in 10 days so june 29th like i said there will be rewards for leveling her to 60 which is not really that hard to do and pre-creating her gives you some goodies as well so make sure you do both now with the launch of corsair we also got the announcement that we'll be getting summer season on that same day summer season is back and we knew that console was getting a summer season but it said specifically that it was console specific so i thought okay that really means that season is just dead we're not getting it in pc but it seems like i was wrong and pc is also getting summer season this time though it's a little bit different it's going to feature a growth pass on top of the normal season pass that we know of you know the list of objectives that you need to do very standard very normal to do but most people once they finish the pass they didn't really know what to do so they realized this was a bit of an issue new players after they're done with season they don't know where to go from there they were really struggling on normal servers so the idea behind this is to allow players who are done with season to transition into normal servers and other aspects of the game more smoothly there will be short-term objectives that you need to complete on this growth pass and then longer term ones to help you get to a stage of the game you feel comfortable with i like that idea there was also a mention of a mini server allowing one player to grind in a completely empty server there will be 20 of these mini servers at launch but in order to gain access you need to do some special quests or win in some events you can also invite up to 30 of your friends to grind with you on on this server all for yourself the catch is that once you have access to this mini server you only have 24 hours of access before being removed from that mini server so far this is a season only addition but the devs said they want to make it a permanent thing after seasons is over so we'll see how it ends up evolving in the future for now it seems really interesting kind of like a hybrid of what people want in a pve only server but without the catch of well if you only have a pve only and no pvp how will you maintain your spot and not just get griefed out in popular areas when people just grind over you this seems to be like their solution for that we'll see how hard it is to actually complete these quests to actually get access and we'll see how popular it is on july 15th we will be getting mansions which is pretty exciting we saw a little teaser of it when ataraxion got released the mansions themselves are going to be located in the eastern border and heidel so the node of eastern border which is just east of heidel proper that whole section where there's some imps that seems to be the mansion area where they're going to be placing the mansions we'll see more obviously when it comes out on july 15th not much more detail honestly on the mansion system we know there's going to be like special exclusive furniture items you can craft and possibly buy from the cash shop i imagine there will be some cash shop furniture of course but not really a lot of information on things like i want to know is it an instanced mansion kind of housing system is it open world if it's open world is it plot based where you have to buy a plot on whatever channel and that's going to be limited availability there won't be plots for everyone we don't really know this i imagine honestly the way that housing and the residence system works in black desert is that it's going to be an instance where there'll be a normal mansion looking thing and you'll go into the mansion sort of zone 
and that's where you see your own proper mansion you can see other people's mansions if you want i think that's how it's going to work because that's how the housing system works right now in the game now i mentioned actoraxion for a second there the first dungeon in bdo is finally going to come out for global regions july 21st almost two months after korea which is a bit sucky but you know at least we have a date now we're going to be getting the first dungeon zone but they have announced the next three will have ever increasing levels of difficulty with the final zone even having elezra as a boss battle looks pretty good they showed off another uh, boss or, or monster that we we're going to be fighting in the in the second zone i think the second biome that's going to be coming out in korea very soon on august 12th we will have a new mini game called yar I believe that's how you say it. it's a card game similar to poker that allows you to collect cards via knowledge entries instead of doing the amity game it's going to replace the amity games with npcs so you challenge these npcs to a game of yar and if you win you get that item or you get increased amity uh, with that npc uh, to get those knowledge entries that you need or to get whatever item from the amity shop that you need from this uh npc so it seems interesting looks really nice so i hope um we know more about it when it launches again very little amounts of detail for this thing but it looks good at least. RBF is getting another minor revamp in the form of new maps. So on June 19th, we'll be getting a map based on the Northern Plain of Serendia, if I read that correctly. And then in September or October, we're gonna get a second map based in Valencia City. So both of these maps are gonna require new forms of tactics and are gonna introduce a rank system, allowing one player to act as a sort of commander of sorts, dictating the flow of battle for his team. We're gonna see how it's gonna do when they did garment's nest uh, we all know that didn't end up very popular after the first couple of weeks uh, speaking of rbf though we are also getting new channels that are going to prevent the use of gillies with the red battlefield so if you thought using a ghillie or your opponents using ghillies was not fair well now you can play on those channels or use those uh, rbf channels to make sure that no one is able to use uh, ghillies personally the most annoying thing for me was when allies gillied up in red colors that kind of messed you up a little bit but overall i think this change will be welcomed by most players who do any form of rbf maybe not the ones that are gillied up and playing classes like sage and sword but you know i don't feel too bad about that on august 26 we are getting the terror of the deep sea dungeon so never ending dungeon we talked about this in the calcium ball that was a while ago they just talked about it coming out we don't really know more information but from what we know in the calcium ball is that you go in solo one time every three or four weeks and you grind till you die or you leave so if you die you get thrown out of the dungeon and you lose half your loot and if you leave you keep your loot but again you can't come back in so both instances you have to wait on the cooldown timer to be able to enter again in a few weeks so we'll see how it ends up working out again the info they gave us is a little bit outdated now we don't know if it's changed but again august 26 is not that far and all these dates by the way are korean dates so expect unless i say global expect about one to two weeks for us to get it after after these dates although they said for some content we're gonna have to wait about a month or two to get those things so for this uh, specific one the, the deep sea dungeon it's probably gonna be another month or two before we actually get it so expect it in the fall and not in the summer now pvp wise we are getting 10 versus 10 implemented on august 26 taking place in the thornwood castle that's what we've been wondering about what about the thornwood castle pvp it seems like they kind of meshed it with this 10 v 10 thing uh, pvp seasons was also mentioned and the possible addition of pvp specific gear sets which you can enhance uh, that sounds incredible and also kind of terrifying for someone who hates enhancing but also wants to pvp we'll see how it goes but so far it does seem like they're diving into making pvp a little bit more interesting and fun for all players now with this in mind they have decided to add ranked and unranked pvp arena called arena of solaire now this is your own gear but it's going to be restricted to around 620 gs in the first season but it sets you up against another player in a 1v1 scenario much like they have on black desert mobile you queue up for this and you just get into a match 1v1 best of one there you go the following seasons after the first one we'll see a gear score limit increase to 625 and then 630 so this kind of range is what the developers say is the average gear of most players in the game worldwide now if you're really good at this ranked arena at the end of the season you can get special titles and skins much like the Arsha weapon skins that we have now now 
now. So that's all coming supposedly August 26th for Korea. On September 2nd, we will see the release of Tier 10 Dyna, so Mythical Dyna, the unicorn variant of the Mythical Dream Horses, will be releasing with the ability to sprint on water for a short duration. It looks really good, a lot better than I think Mythical Arduinot. This whole sprinting on the water is cool, but like the developer said, it's not really something that's going to be too useful outside of uh, maybe just traversing some rivers and stuff like that. On September 30th, the Trade Life Skill will get a complete overhaul and revamp. So trading guilds will be introduced where you can join the Xi'an Merchant Guild or the Lavania League to gain different advantages depending on where you trade. Trade item prices will get synced for all items and you can now build improved wagons that are permanent with the added bonus of creating camel caravans to trade with. October 14th will bring Elvia to Calfion Zones and introduce the Black Star Raid. The recommended AP for some of these zones is 340 AP, which is kind of insane. But the catch is that you will need to use special mechanics to survive and be able to grind in these locations. Now, one of the ways they want to do this is by introducing weather conditions that allow you to lower the AP and DP of certain monsters, much like Rain affects your AP right now in the game, though probably to a greater extent. Because of this, they want to buff green grade weapons like Barris and Aswell that have special effects already. They didn't specify what they meant by buffing the green weapons to make them more utility items, but we'll know more as we get closer to the Elvia Calfion launch. In terms of class balance, they admitted that original classes like Ranger, Musa, Warrior, and the like have inherent problems compared to newer classes. So starting in October, we'll be getting class reboots. So the original 17 classes, that's a lot of classes still, all the classes before Shy are getting massive overhauls to their kit, making them more in line with modern classes and even giving them unique traits like Sage's Dungeon Key Passive. They showed off a bit of the Ranger Awakening reboot that they're working on. It's very interesting, something to look forward to if you're playing a class where you feel you've been left behind by newer classes. Looks like October and, and then on, it's going to be a pretty good time for a lot of the OG class players. For newer players, the tutorial system is getting completely reworked as well. The storytelling aspect of the game is getting more revamped. They admit it's not the strong suit of the game, so they showed us a demo of the new tutorial so far that shows a more typical tutorial for an RPG game. It looks really, really good. Now for world bosses like Blood Nuver, Storm Karanda, Nightmare Zarka, and Thunder Kudum, all the uber bosses, they're aware of an issue of players just kind of going to these bosses, hitting it once for loot and not contributing enough damage. So they're going to be implementing debuffs and a minimum amount of damage needed to get loot from these bosses to increase the damage contribution from all players. The Node War revamp for global regions will be coming in August, which will bring a lot of changes to the Merc system, Node War tiers, and a lot more that are still actually being developed in Korea right now. The idea is to get newer players into the Node War scene by having some days be limited to a certain amount of players and then others have no participation cap. We'll see how the system actually ends up being by the time we get it in August. For those of you who remember the failure that was Blue Battlefield, the naval red battlefield mode that was quickly scrapped after the test on Global Labs. Well, it seems like it's not fully dead. The developers are working on making ship navigation better and less desync prone and improve cannon targeting before going forward with naval PvP. They also announced a new tier of ship called a Dreadnought that will be coming as well. The Guild Galley will also be getting the yellow gear and improvements very soon. The yellow gear was introduced to Global Labs forever ago, guys. Uh, we just never saw it on live servers, so that should be coming very soon and hopefully make the galley more in line with Karak's as they've fallen out of use by most guilds. They have dedicated a lot of resources to creating some amazing outfits lately and they gave us a sneak peek at future designs for Ranger, Lon, Konoichi, and Striker. They all look amazing. That Striker one specifically looks really cool. As for leveling, the developers do not want you to feel burdened to level up, but if you level to 65, they're gonna add a sort of special statue for your mansion or your house. As for pets, a lot of people have been asking for more pets to take out at once. So instead of having five pets, maybe have six or seven. So instead, we're getting tier five pets. So tier five will have slightly faster looting speed and more skills to learn. The method of getting these tier five pets can be with silver, normal exchanging of pets method, or another method they're not sure about right now. Uh, Fallen God Helmet was talked about a little bit, but the developer said that we should see it after the winter region comes out at the end of the year. That was the original plan 
It's coming, but uh, we may or may not get it with Eternal Winter. We don't know yet. The cheering animation when you get Mass of Pure Magic is getting disabled next week, which is a huge change. Thank you. And that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Let me know what you guys think about today's video in the comments or over on our community Discord. We're now public and accepting new members, so follow that link, react to the comments to get your member role, and say hello. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell icon to get notified when I upload my next video. Remember, bell is good. As always, guys, thanks again for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.